Hello, welcome. I just received this little guy. Um, it is a Xiaomi Mi Smart Home Gateway. Um, it is uh, quite a nice little device. It's supposed to be the heart of your home automation system where all the little devices connect to this and this connects to the Mi Cloud and, the, and you register your phone with the Mi Cloud and you send it commands and it sends the commands back and and that's how you control your home and set up various scenes and reactions to various inputs. Um, now obviously I'm, I'm a bit skeptical about this whole cloud thing. Um, I don't like not knowing what's going on in the cloud so what I want to do is I want to take this thing apart and see how it works. But first, before we break it, let's just have a good look at it. Um, as you can see, it's got the um, Australian style plugs on the back there, which is great for me because I live in Australia. I think these are the only styles you can get. You would probably need an adapter to get it to work in any other country. But uh, I suppose that's what you get for buying a uh, Chinese brand piece of equipment. Um, it's surprisingly solid. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It is a proper hard little piece of equipment. It's got this nice um, translucent ring around the outside which just lights up and you can select any color you want. Um, it uh, works as a night light or you can have it react to certain inputs such as a motion sensor will turn the light on or something along those lines. Um, they claim your imagination is the only limitation. A um, little button there for uh, turning it on and off, turning the light on and off, and also for setting it up for pairing with other little devices. Now this came in a kit. Um, it was the gateway with um, uh, one motion sensor, one door sensor, and one push button. Um, and you can obviously buy the little units individually. Um, Yes, and it's a lot smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting a fairly bulky piece of equipment, but I mean, that's nice and compact. Um, you can already see on the back here that I've taken the little rubber plugs out. No adhesives at all, they were just kind of press fit into those holes, and you can see these annoying little split flathead security screws. So uh, you'll need a screwdriver with a little slit in the middle. You can either buy one or you can make your own. And, as luck would have it, here's one I made earlier. Basically, cheapy little IKEA fixer handset with a, uh, a bit that I cut down the middle with a little hobby saw. Um, now I uh, caught my finger while doing that, but you know, DIY, you're going to injure yourself every now and then, so don't do that. But um, yeah, let's start by removing some screws. Obviously this will void warranties, but that's what we do, right? If you can't open it, you don't own it. Nice long screws. Yeah, they go all the way through. Oh yes, before I open it up, this is a speaker on the front here. So when you hit the little button, its default configuration is that this is actually a doorbell. It makes a little ding-dong, ding-dong noise, which will wake your kids. So if you are configuring this up in your house, don't do it when everybody's asleep. Okay. Alright, well, there's the speaker. There's a little connector for the speaker. Let's pop that off. Okay. So there's the button mechanism over there. Usual speaker. Pretty solid. Nothing, uh, not flexible at all. And here we have, oh right, okay, so there comes the ring, that's the colour ring, and there 
are all the LEDs. There's plenty of them, so it gives a nice uniform color. Put that over there. And what have we got here? This must be the um, Wi-Fi module. And judging by the number of pins around the edge, it's more than just the Wi-Fi module. It's probably the entire processor is in there. Um, it's got a MAC address, definitely Wi-Fi. There's your uh, little antenna on there. Uh, what else have we got? Loads of test points. And what looks like a serial header, or some sort of header. Probably combination JTAG serials. I'll definitely be poking around on those to try and find if I can get serial onto this device. There's, there's the button that goes into that uh, top plate. Uh, LED, status indicator LED. And this little guy, it's got an antenna trace on it here. And let me see, JN5169. Um, that's a Zigbee microcontroller as well. So this must use Zigbee to communicate with the other little devices because um, only this gateway connects to your Wi-Fi. All the other devices connect to this so they must be using some sort of either either bog standard Zigbee or some sort of modified version of Zigbee. But that's, that's interesting. Um, what's even more interesting though is that this looks like there's space for another one that's completely unpopulated. Now I don't know if that's Zigbee as well or if maybe they were going to do something with maybe Bluetooth low energy or something along those lines but that's very interesting um, and they both have chat ports there although this is a uh, six pin and this is only a five pin Interesting. Love to know what went in there. Um, right, let's go one level deeper. Let's. How does this come apart now? Uh, all right. Well, that's pretty simple. Goes straight through. So we've got two PCBs. Um, this one has the pins directly soldered in, and what looks like. Yeah, it's got the uh, grooves for isolation, so this must be the high voltage section in the middle. And the all of the LEDs are around the edge. Let's see if we can get these two apart now. Yeah, it's giving up. There we go. Oh, nice header. That comes together there. Let's take this one step further. Does it pop out? Oh, it's got these little retainer clips. There we go. Ah, not much on the back there, just the header. Very good. Okay, put those down there. So let's have another look at this guy. Uh, so we've got oh, loads of test points on the back here. These are all the various voltages, ground 12, 3.35. And this is the header that connects to the top board. Green, red, blue, and white. That must be to control the... Uh, the LED colors. Interesting. Anyway, let's have a look at this board then. So you got your transformer, got your header. These pins are soldered directly onto the board. No mucking about. At least they're soldered on and it's not some sort of press spring contact or something along those lines. Um, yeah, nothing unusual there. Your usual components that you'd find on a power supply. And then obviously the low voltage LEDs around the edge. Very nice. Well, it's quite a simple little device, and I suppose that is basically all there is to it. And the rest is all structural bits of plastic. So um, I am going to start poking around at these LEDs. Sorry, at these uh, 
pins here to see if we can find some sort of debug output or serial port or something and hopefully we can do something with this because it's completely closed up. I've spent a good few hours trying to get into this. There's a, two open UDP ports or something along those lines where the phone app would send traffic to it but all connections out from this on a network level are outbound. There's no way to actually connect into this device. Um, so I want to see what is running and if there's any way to make it do my bidding instead of what the cloud tells it to. So uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll have an update soon.